life from conception until, until death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Today in this gospel, we have the account of the Annunciation. This is a great mystery, right? It's a great mystery how the angel Gabriel comes to Mary. He greets her, and then he's kind of asking her, right, if she will take on this mission from God. He's delivering his message, but he doesn't know yet what she will say. It's not certain. And so the angel Gabriel brings the message and waits, and waits even in some sense, you could say, with all of creation to see, will Our Lady, will she, she say yes? And indeed she does. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. And there's lots to reflect on in this whole account. That's why we call it a mystery, right, of the Annunciation. One of them is just of Our Lady, of her readiness and willingness to say yes to God. And for us too, right, in our own lives, we can think for ourselves that God's action in my life, he wants to do many things. The only limiting factor, the bottleneck, is my own will, right? Will I cooperate? Will I receive his grace? Will I receive his help? Am I, am I following him? Am I trying to follow him in every single way? That's what we're trying to do. And so uh, for us, this mystery of the Annunciation is something that we can reflect on a lot all throughout our lives and still benefit from and receive insights and just see how our life kind of matches up with those words of Our Lady. Let it be done unto me according to your word. With that in mind, uh, today, the f uh, this first Sunday of October, we do have the option, and we're exercising this option, to have the Mass for Our Lady of the Rosary. The feast day is on October the 7th, but already we, we can begin October on this first Sunday with a, with a Mass in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary. And this kind of then sets the tone for the whole month of October, where we want to um, be mindful of, of the Holy Rosary, right? And it's the month of the Rosary. So we want to try to, to spend the time to pray our Rosaries very, very well. If you're praying your Rosary in five minutes or less, you're not praying it well, right? Um, but for us, like, usually it takes between maybe 15 and 20 minutes to pray a rosary well, where we can be reflective and really try to, really try to pray it. And so in this homily today, I want to reflect with you just a little bit more today on the Holy Rosary and a little bit of the history of, of, of the rosary as we begin this month of October. St. Dominic is a pivotal figure in the development of the rosary. But even before St. Dominic, there was kind of a development that was already happening. Um, definitely priests and religious, they were in the habit already of trying to pray the 150 Psalms, all of the book of Psalms regularly, right? And so there was 150 of them. But for some, they were finding it difficult if they couldn't read or if they didn't know Latin or if they couldn't, books were rare and expensive, right? If they, if they didn't have the book with them, especially missionaries. Um, and so what developed was this tradition then of not, pr if they couldn't pray the 150 Psalms, they'd at least pray 150 Paternosters, the Our Father. And then quickly developing after that was praying 150 Hail Marys. And the cords and the ropes developed um, already before St. Dominic received the rosary from Our Lady. So these traditions were kind of there of, of kind of repetitious prayer, of reciting those prayers uh, over and over, 150 times in, in place of, those, of each of the Psalms. But then what happened was um, St. Dominic, he then received this vision of Our Lady and she gave to him the Holy Rosary. And she told him not only to pray um, the Rosary like the 150 Hail Marys, but, but also then to break it up and during those times to reflect. This, this was the new thing that he received, to reflect on these 15 mysteries in the life of Jesus and of Mary. And those mysteries would prove pivotal for the work of St. Dominic. And I want to get back to that. So, but first, uh, when he was born, part of the history for St. Dominic was he was born in 1170. And just before he was born, his mom had a dream about him. I don't know, uh, just before birth, uh, if how crazy it is, right? Uh, I've seen my sisters, but not uh, so much the week of. But uh, she, uh, in, in getting ready to give birth, she had, had this prophetic dream. And what she saw in her dream was she saw not a boy or a baby coming forth from her, but she saw actually a dog leaping out of her womb. 
and this dog having a torch in its mouth. And then she saw this dog um, in her dream run all over the whole world and take this torch and light other torches on fire throughout the whole world. And maybe, yeah, what do you make of this, right? Um, but nevertheless, uh, for her son, this is what he would do, that baby who was born. He would be one who would found this new religious order named after him the Dominicans or the Order of Preachers, and they would go around proclaiming the gospel all over the world, taking that light of Christ and igniting it in many places all over the world. What's really interesting is that this order would be mainly, I mean, named after St. Dominic, the Dominicans, but even that name, Dominicans, from the Latin, it comes from Domini and Canes, or it can be translated dogs of God or dogs of the Lord, right? And so these Dominicans who were going all over the world were fulfilling in some way this prophetic dream that his mom had even before he was born. For St. Dominic, um, as a young man, he had a very keen intellect, right? He was very smart and thoughtful and clear in his thinking. And he wanted to give his, his, his uh, intelligence to God, right? And so what he, wanted, what he decided to do was that he would devote his life to studying, to researching, and to preaching, right? And of course, prayer too, but, but really to trying to, to preach the faith clearly and well. And at that time, it was very much needed because there were a number of heresies, but the most prominent one in that area and time was the Albigensian heresy. And this was taking root and spreading quite quickly, not just because of the ideas, but even spreading spreading by force, right? And so one of the big components of the Albigensian heresy was something that goes back even way before, right? And it's a repeat. It's this idea that that the spirit is, is good, but the soul is bad, kind of putting them up opposed to each other, right? That the spirit, sorry, I don't know if I said that right, the spirit is good, but the body is bad. The body and all creaturely and worldly things, all of that is evil. The only good thing is your spirit. And of course, there's many problems with this, right? First, like in the beginning, God creates everything and says it's good. Yes, there's the fall and things are, um, are, are corrupted, but there's still a goodness to everything. And even more than that, the incarnation, right? Jesus, God, he takes on human flesh. God can't take on human flesh if it's totally evil, totally corrupted. And so there's a number of issues that came up. That's not my main point. But uh, this is going on in the background, and St. Dominic sees it, and he wants, to, he wants to, to help to bring clarity to the confusion that's coming about through these teachings. And so he studies, he works, he preaches. And he finds he's somewhat successful. It's not a complete failure or anything, but he's, he's kind of startled that he's not more successful, that when he teaches and preaches, like people don't just get it and, like, and, and leave, that, leave those teachings behind. He was struggling and trying to figure out how he could be more successful for the glory of God. And so uh, as he was doing this and praying, of course, as well, it was then that Our Lady appeared to him. And what she gave him was was the rosary. He said, if you want to be more successful, if you want to bring many people back to the church, back to the full Catholicism, then you need to take them this rosary. Not just your reason and and your, your clear thinking, but also this rosary, and in particular, those 15 mysteries that Our Lady gave to St. Dominic. And so he did this. He made it his mission primarily preaching the rosary, and teaching people how to pray and to reflect on these 15 mysteries. And with that, he was very successful, right? He did, he, he, it was amazing. He was amazed by what he was able to accomplish with this gift from Our Lady. Some of you might wonder, right? Um, many religious, they wear a rosary around their belt, right? They, they, they keep large rosaries with them, many, even until today. Where does that come from? It comes from this tradition of St. Dominic, right? It comes from St. Dominic who worked so, like who did so much good and fruitful work through preaching the rosary. It goes back to this tradition of St. Dominic. Now, uh, for the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, many of us are familiar with the account of the battle at at Lepanto, right? And, And the great power of the rosary. I wanna share with you one that was just a little bit before then. It was, it was the first big battle that came up where the power of the rosary was revealed. 
This was in September the 12th, 1213. Again, with the Albigensians, right? They were taking over in, in France and growing and growing and becoming bigger and becoming militant. And even so much so that Pope Innocent III, he saw this, right? He was troubled by it. And so he called for Catholics, Catholics everywhere, to rise up against this militant heretical group and to defend the faith and to defend their home and the other Catholics in that area. And so, uh, yeah, the Pope called for this, and guess what happened? Um, fifth, only 1,500 Catholic men, like soldiers, maybe not even soldiers, probably many of them were farmers, but, uh, but they came to, to, to fight against this militant group, only 1,500. And this is the Pope asking for it. Um, and so, but these 1,500, they came and they, they, they were ready to go. So uh, they came up against an Al the Albigensian army, which was, uh, which, was, uh, which was there, and that army numbered about 30,000. 30,000, a few more, <laughs> quite a few more. And so uh, for the Albigensians, they saw this Catholic army called for by the Pope, and, and, and they laughed, right? What is this? Um, they're not going to stand a chance. And so that the evening before battle, the account is recorded that they gave themselves to drunkenness, to, to debauchery, all of these. Yes, they were good warriors and they had a great general, but they just didn't take any of it seriously. For the Catholics on the other side, they weren't led by a great general. They were led really by, by religious, right? They were led by Count Simon de Montfort and by St. Dominic. And the night before, St. Dominic had them praying the rosary, reflecting on those 15 mysteries. And then early the next morning, they got up and they prayed the mass and they had confession and only then went into the battle. When the, the soldiers were sent into the battle, St. Dominic went to the, clo to, the, to the church close by and there he prayed the rosary. And as, as these, this small Catholic army went up against the 30,000, I did the math, it's one, one Catholic for every 200 Albigensians. So we don't even have 200 people in here today. So it's like me against all of you. It's impossible, right? And, and impossible. But yet, uh, by the power of the rosary, they won. That, that which is impossible is possible for God. And so uh, for many who, who were there and who fought in that battle, and then also many others who heard about it, they were so inspired to begin or to take up more seriously praying this rosary that Our Lady gave to St. Dominic. This is a serious spiritual, spiritual weapon, right, for both temporal things in terms of winning this battle, but also in terms of spiritual benefits and spiritual fruits. This rosary gives a crown of roses to Our Lady. It gives so much honor to her, but also pulls down many, many graces from heaven. Just a few more quick things. Um, there are 15 promises to the rosary, right? We talk about the fruits and benefits. Our Lady has 15 promises for those who pray the rosary. One of them says, to all those who shall recite my rosary devoutly, I promise my special protection and very great graces. If we're thinking to ourselves, I need graces in my life or in my family or for others. I can pray the rosary and be sure because Our Lady promises it that she will give very great graces to those devoted to her rosary. Now, uh, with that in mind too, um, it, historically, the Hail Mary developed, right? It developed before the rosary. It was mainly uh, just the first half of the Hail Mary, the Ave Maria. And those are the two greetings of the angel Gabriel to Our Lady and then the greeting of Elizabeth to Our Lady. It was only later that that second half was added. And it's very interesting, the history of that. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. That came about during the Black Plague, during a time in Europe where uh, it seems about a third of the people died from this plague. And so they added to, to the Hail Mary that second half to beg Our Lady, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Not because it's far away, but because it could be tomorrow, right? And also during the time that that was added, with great urgency, it was also a time of, of crisis for the church. The papacy itself was in crisis as, as the Pope was living in Avignon in France and not in Rome, and just the church was in shambles, right? It was, there was lots of confusion and difficulties, 
and, and, and challenges and bad example, right? Even for a time, there was three popes. And so during this time, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. For us too, and especially we pray that second part of the rosary, we can, or the second part of the Hail Mary, we can be mindful of, of the circumstances on which that was added and even think of our own challenges today. Even uh, in terms of, as we reflected on a few weeks ago, some of the divisions happening in our own families, in our own communities over all of the COVID stuff, right? For us, we can pray with urgency. Pray for us now, now, Mary. We need your graces now for unity. And in, in, even in terms of the church, as before and even now, there's many challenges, right? We can keep in mind that that second part was added for the sake of the church as well. For us, I want to encourage you um, this month, all of us, right, to pray the rosary regularly. If you can, every day, every day. Um, this is the month of the rosary. We know the power of the rosary, not only at, at this example in France, but there's so many stories of what Our Lady has, has given um, through the graces won by praying the Holy Rosary. Just one final uh, quote from St. Louis-Marie de Montfort. He says, to become perfect, say a rosary every day. Do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.